Welcome to Suerte del Molino, a farm in Andalusia, Spain. What do we do here? Somehow we work our asses off and uh, we do things. Yeah, many times I ask myself, why don't I just leave it as it is? and drink, drink my nightcap uh, looking over the sunset and just enjoy life. I don't know, somehow we humans are engineered differently. We find some meaning in doing. Here, this area in front of me, this is where the dogs and I play about, it's an hour a day, half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the afternoon. And uh, so this is trampled and exposed. And there are not many species here. This evening I have, I am being interviewed by a, a university student in Sweden about permaculture and things like that. And there were a few interesting questions they sent me in advance. Is uh, how have I and have, how ha did I change because of the nature here? How did my opinion of nature change since I'm here? All very valid questions. <laughs> yeah. Nature is not static. I'm not, neither an, am I. <laughs> so uh, things develop, things grow, things change. I really like this changing world. They say the biggest curse in life is may you live in interesting times. We surely, surely do. Why? I cannot speak. Um, here I have the new berm, the new swale. And we have fruit trees and then some shade trees. So I just made this trough here to plant kamut. It's called korasan here. It's a wheat, a grain. Why do I do that? Um, I try something new. I want to get the roots into the soil. I want to get it established. I want it... I need new species. I mean, it's... it's, it's I did uh, some consulting for somebody not too far from here about their farm and there were many, many places with one or two species per square meter. It's not good, it's not right. On top of Table Mountain in Cape Town, there are about 2,000 to 3,000 species per square meter. Here I have two or three species. It's not right. Uh, the Hesa, where we live, is man-made over 3,000 years, but with specific conditions, put in animals three months a year and they then get out. We don't do that anymore. Okay, I'm going to plant kamut. I'm also planting radishes, daikon radishes, and I'm planting uh, 
Swiss chart and things like that. I was asked why my selection of trees and uh, okay it goes like this and my answer is always it's only valid for my very specific conditions. I live here uh, in this Sierra mountain range area and half an hour's drive that way is one of the wettest parts of Spain. Half an hour. I get a quarter of the rain, half an hour from me get. So one cannot just put a blanket statement where I am, oh, you live in Andalusia, therefore this and that. This little farm has its conditions. The worst enemy here, it's not water anymore. I think we have infiltrated a lot. Um, it's this sudden change from cold to hot. Sudden change of high humidity to 15% humidity. That's my take on what is going on here. It might change in five years. I don't know. So, I have water coming from the creek. Distribution pond. Uh, not too much water of the percentage of water that does come down will come here. Maybe 20%, 15-20%. We'll fill the swale, go out and then come that way unless I make another swale. So water, yes, if it fills once or twice a year, I'm good. Drip irrigation, yes, I'm good. Thank God. Peach, peach, peach. Then a moringa. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Come again. Paulovnia. There's the leaf, there's the leaf, it just came off, it grows very fast, it has big leaves, it gives shade and also a wind buffer. This is the Morera, the mulberry, again, grows very fast, it's the white mulberry, it is even used in fabric for firefighters because it doesn't burn that easily. Um, so it's trees. Uh, I want my fruit trees and then I have a canopy and then I have a overstory, big trees and then I have my fruit trees and they are planted two meters apart, which is too close for many people's liking, but I can always prune it so that it grows north-south, that way, this way, and not to watch each other. So I'm not worried about that, but I can get a wind buffer. And uh, this pattern carries on. But in the next weeks or so, I will plant some nitrogen fixers in between, which is lower plant, like the Vachalia Karu. And uh, I'll also plant some enormous trees, um, perhaps the, what, what is it called, the love tree. And uh, what else do I have? The oaks. Um, I will not see those oaks taller than me in my lifetime, but that's okay. I, I plant, and what happens later is none of my business. I had joy doing this. So this pattern continues, and then in between, this is the sweet cucumber. I will plant more bushes, and... This kamut will be the ground cover for now. 
until the beginning of summer. This is the pattern that I follow. It, all these trees have been proven to survive and do well here on this farm. I mean, there we have the peaches and the uh, pomegranate and the mulberries. So I just repeat this pattern here. I have planted many, many hundreds of different species. I have no evidence to show that they survived. And uh, so I start repeating what does well. And uh, it gives us joy. At least I feel more secure. First three years flat out, just testing, testing, seeing, observing, learning. But now slowly I repeat what works. That's it. Every year on this farm it's very different. This is the first, this is my fourth uh, winter and it's the first winter it's not very wet between September and December. Um, I, we had very dry periods after December, but this is the first time we have it before December. So that changed a lot of things for me, what to plant, when to plant, how to plant it. Um, I don't want to irrigate wheat and uh, things like that. It's, it's too much. And this here next door, I mean, my potatoes are still growing. Why? I don't know. Because I didn't harvest them last time. So pomegranate, vachelia, karoo, potato, and this. It's also a potato and a, no, this is a cystus, this is a fig. So I plant, we have some uh, garlic here. Ah, oh, an interesting fact is that all the swales, now we have a thousand six hundred meter of swales. We have plant, planted all the swales seven times with the same crop and never did we get the same growth on the swales. We planted within a few days and on some, some swales it germinated, others not at all. Um, yes, a lot for me to learn and to get used to and grow with it and explore, but that's why we are here. Thankfully we are in shape with getting the water to infiltrate the earth. Um, this is working. More potatoes. Why now? Interesting. If he wants to grow, I'm happy. I let it be. I also have had some fixed ideas. Chestnut doesn't grow here. It only grows on 500 meters and more and in the community slapped me and told me I talk rubbish, which I'm happy they do. And the chestnut is growing, even from a seed. I have a few thousand seeds I will put on, put in the soil. 
on the west of the creek coming up shortly I'm waiting for the rain the soil is dry I dig a lot of lumps which I don't want to do all good exciting times I have doubled almost my yellow peach orchard I'm going to eat yellow peaches until I turn yellow till next time goodbye